A lot of us are still rocking the Galaxy S9 or the Note 9 running the Samsung One UI. If you're looking for a whole bunch of tips and tricks how to become more efficient, get more out of your system, especially before the Galaxy S10 rollout, well this is what you need to know. Let's do it. Check this feature, it will allow you to tap on your screen and it will show you whatever notification or whatever time you have, whatever you set on your lock screen. It doesn't have to be permanently shown. Let me show you how to set that up. Go into your phone, go into settings, you're looking for lock screen, tap on that. Right, now you're looking for one called the always on display. When you see the always on display, scroll down to the bottom until you see display mode, tap on that and now you've got options. You can show always. Uh, tap to show or show on a schedule. So let me show you what it looks like when you say show always So there it is show always I'm always going to have whatever is on my lock screen displayed Now if I change that to tap tap to show nothing on the screen Until I tap it and there it is. I think that's pretty cool And speaking of waking up your phone do this go into settings Go down until you're gonna see the advanced features Tap on that. And then you're going to look for an option called motion and gestures. Tap on that. And then enable the lift to wake. Right. Now that you've done that, let's do this. Let's lock the phone. Now the phone's locked. If I want to wake it, all I've got to do is simply lift up the phone and there it is. Okay, one more thing on the lock screen whilst we still got it open. So go into your settings, go into lock screen, and this time you're going to choose clock styles. Once you choose on clock styles, now we've had a whole bunch of clock styles on the previous versions of Android. The ones I like to ha enable are as follows. Firstly, I like to be able to have my calendar. So this way I can see at a glance exactly what I've got coming up, which is just a nice way to do it on, straight off the lock screen. Being able to have a full calendar allows me to get a glance of the future and I like to be able to have multiple clocks. This is very cool for me because I work with lots of multiple time zones and lots of countries. I can very easily see up to four time zones at the same time and I can even give it various color including this rainbow vomit one if I want to. And then this is what it looks like on my lock screen. Another cool feature that we've had for quite a while now, but is very underutilized, so I thought I'd better mention here as well, is when you long hold on an icon, you have some shortcut options. So for example, long hold on Chrome, and you can go straight into incognito mode. Long hold on the play button, and you can go straight to your apps. Long hold on the camera, and now you can straight away go to video or photo. Let me go to video. There it is, straight into the video mode. Let me go back, and long hold on the camera again, straight into photo, and there it is. So nice, easy, convenient way of getting to you exactly what you need to do at a touch of a button. With Android, you've always been able to customize your screen how you want it. You can leave gaps between your apps. You can move apps all over the place, <clears throat> Apple. And you can actually now have a facility to lock your home screen. So long press, go into home screen settings, and there's an option there called lock home screen layout. And when you do that and enable that, you can no longer move your apps around the screen. Why would you want to do that? Well, for example, if you have little kids around, if you play with your phone, you know when you get it back, it's never how you left it. As you know, to get to the home screen settings, you can long press anywhere on the screen and there it is, there is your home screen settings. But it's a quick way of doing it as well, but you simply can drink the screen. And now you can access your widget or your home screen settings, your themes, anything at the bottom there can be accessed. I really, really dig this feature. Okay, so go into your settings, now you have an option for portrait or auto rotate. Right, and this is not new, so before you at me at the comments, I know it's not new, cool, but this is worth mentioning. So there we go, the screen rotates, which is great. Now, the problem that I have with this, if you're lying in bed, you're kind of lying at a certain angle, you don't want your entire screen rotate, you're happy to keep it where it is, so then you go back and you relock the screen. Right, so you put it back into portrait mode, now it no longer automatically turns. Right, let's just test that. There we go, okay. But now watch what happens. In Samsung One UI interface, you now have a new icon, bottom right, which looks like that. Look at that little gray icon. Right, there it is. So now if you tap on it, it rotates the screen. How cool is that? So even if your phone is locked onto portrait mode, simply tapping the icon rotates it, making it more convenient for you to use wherever, in whatever angle you want to be in. 
Right, we have to talk about split screen apps and using two apps on the same screen at the same time. This is how you do it now on the Samsung One UI. Recently used apps, click on the icon of the apps you want to split screen and then open it up. Now choose a second app. Let's just find something other than the gallery. And there it is. The second app will be on the split screen at the bottom. So one at the top and one at the bottom. Now this didn't used to be this complicated, I suppose, um, on the previous versions, but it is how you do it on the Samsung One UI. Right, let's talk about some keyboard shortcuts here. So go into any application that you can have the keyboard open, press the little drop down arrow, and here you've got the modes option. Once you press on the modes, you've got to stand on modes, one-handed keyboard mode, which means you can move the keyboard from the left side or the right side, making it very easy to use with one hand. And the final option is the floating keyboard. Now this allows you to hold the keyboard and move it around your screen. To be honest, I haven't had any use whatsoever to be able to do this, but it's there if you want it. And of course, it will remember your keyboard settings once you go back into the application. Go back, click on the little drop down, click on modes and back to standard mode or whichever mode you want. Right, let's go back into settings. And this time we're gonna scroll down until we see apps. Now this is gonna have a list of all the apps you have installed on your phone, obviously. And as you scroll down, you're gonna see a little cog next to some of the apps. When you see that, it means that you can actually go straight into that and then customize the settings for that particular app. Right, let's fire up the picture gallery and here you're going to see obviously all our photos and videos that we've taken. I'd like to show you a couple of things. Firstly, people don't know that you can zoom by pinching and once you do that, that allows you to resize it. You can long hold on the fold names, the album names and reposition them. So if you've got certain albums you want to see first, you can just do that as well. Go back into pictures and then you can pinch, zoom in, zoom out, make them bigger and smaller. Pretty cool. Right, look at the top, you've got something called locations. Tap on that, this is really, really cool. If you like to snap a lot of photos around the world or wherever you happen to be traveling, this is really cool. Anything that's geotagged will be grouped together. Simply tap on that location and it will show you all the pictures that you snapped there. Right, back into settings we go. So swipe down from the top and click on the little setting icon. And this time I'm going to go to device care, but not to optimize your device. I want to show you something different. Click on storage. Now, top right hand side, click the three little dots and this time choose storage analysis. Now, what I want you to see is it actually shows you any files you've got duplicated and any large files, which is a quick way to get back some much needed storage if you are running out, of course. Right, let's talk some security stuff. Go into your cog, into little settings, go down to biometrics and security. And now on this model, you've got a couple of options. Face recognition, iris, fingerprint, much of what's out of focus. Biometrics and preferences, click on that. And preferred biometrics, click on that. And put in my little pin thing. Right, typically it's set to face recognition as a default. I change mine to fingerprint security. So in other words, when I unlock apps, it will going to choose fingerprint security as a preferred method of unlocking them. Whilst we're still talking face recognition, go into that option, put in your unlock pattern. Now you have an option there called faster recognition. If you enable that, it's going to reduce the security element, but it's going to unlock your phone a little bit faster. And then you've got something called Brighten Screen, which increased the brightness temporarily just to unlock your screen. Right, one of the big things about the Samsung One UI is that you can use it one-handedly. So if you little swipe, a little tap of the anywhere on the screen, it brings up your app drawer. But for some reason, you're still going to go right to the top to go and pull down your notification. Even with the two-finger thing, only works right from the very top. But, of course, there's a way that you can change it. So what you're going to do is long press on the screen, choose home screen settings. And at this time, you're going to scroll down until you're going to see the option called quick open notification panel. Enable that and that's all you got to do. Now swipe down from the bottom anywhere on the screen and basically your notification panel now appears. Right, next up, let's talk about the edge paneling and the edge lighting. What I want you to do is go into settings, go into display, choose edge screen, and here you've got the edge panels. And of course, you know that you can simply enable any panel that you want. But look at this, go into edge lighting. 
And this time what we want to do is we want to say show edge lighting and we're going to say whilst the screen is on, whilst the screen is off or always. I always leave it as always. Right, let's go to the edge lighting panel. And here you've got a whole bunch of customization and effects that you can play with. So width is new, you can actually make it much, much wider than previously, which actually makes it now essentially useful because now you can actually see the thing. I like to change the color, I like green, so I change this to green. And now I have the transparency, how transparent you want to make it. I leave it at low transparency because I want the effect of that. And I got the length. And this time I want to go back into long so that when I do get a notification, it actually gives me some time to actually see what that looks like. Right, let's go into settings. I want to show you a couple of other options under the locks screen. So let's choose that as an option. And this time we're going to choose secure lock settings. Put in my pattern. So the first option is lock automatically. So let's tap on that and you can say after how many seconds do you want it to automatically lock? Right, so select your timing and then on the next screen it's going to say to you lock instantly with the power key. So when you press the power key it will just lock your phone instantly. Also factory reset. This is dangerous if you've got kids who are going to put in your pin 15 wrong times. It will reset your phone. So be careful if you enable that. Lock network security means that if you enable that your phone can be traced in case it gets lost. Now, show lockdown option. Now, this is new on the Samsung One UI. Essentially what that means, you normally have power off, restart, and emergency mode. Now, if you're going to enable the show lockdown option, you'll now have a fourth option called lockdown mode. Now, there's a bit of confusion on what this does, so let's clear that up. Okay, let's put my phone into lock mode. And there it is, I've got my normal notification which basically appears and I can tap on it. Fine. Now, let's go into lockdown mode and you can see the notifications disappeared. Even the biometric sensors have been disabled. So you see how it's a more secure way of locking your lock screen. Hey, if you like this video, check out some of these other cool videos right here. And if you're into tech, gadget, apps, how-tos, tips and tricks, hit that subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you guys on the next episode because that's Tech Simple. Cheers for now.